know, I've been covering my wife's long-term Cayenne. We've had it for almost eight years now. We have a 2010 Porsche Cayenne that she loves. And in that time, I have traded, well, lots of cars. And she has begun to ask, when do I get an upgrade? And her current Cayenne has 160,000 miles on it, so we've been looking kind of behind the scenes for what might be next for her. So the major considerations were, we had a budget of about $35,000. She wanted something that drove like her current Cayenne, but better, felt like an upgraded version of her current Cayenne. So we wanted updated tech, an upgraded interior. We'd love to have Apple CarPlay. We needed more space in the second row because my son is now 13 and already taller than my wife. We were hoping for more power and performance than we had in our current Cayenne, and also we were hoping for better miles per gallon. Now that may seem a little crazy to be talking about when our Porsche Cayenne isn't a high performance one, but let me tell you what the reality is. Yeah, over eight years of owning the car, we've had the base 3.6 liter V6 and the miles per gallon have averaged 16 over eight years. So I'm not looking for something to astound me, but just let's get it above an average of 16, please. We drove lots of things, and she's experienced quite a few things because of the different press cars that I've had. We started talking about what she liked, what she didn't, and I had many things on my list for her to drive. One of the ones we drove that we loved was the Genesis GV70. We thought it was amazing. We both really liked it, but our back seats in that are more like the back seats in the Porsche Macan, which we both know is too small for our needs. The other problem was that the only way to get that was brand new at uh, about $65,000 or so, and our budget was about thirty-five, dollars which made that out pretty quickly. We looked at the Acura MDX Type S, which I actually like quite a bit. That is three row. We don't really need a third row, but it was good in pretty much every spec except for price, which is about $70,000 or so, and that is only double our budget, plus the miles per gallon on that wasn't going to be all that great. So then we started to look at, well, what about another older Cayenne? In case you haven't already guessed, we got another Porsche Cayenne. In fact, we went further than that because, you know, you, you want your wife to be happy. You want the person you spend your life with to be thrilled with the car that they drive. At least I do. And so we wound up with another black with tan interior Porsche Cayenne. So almost exactly an upgrade of what she currently had, but better in almost every respect. So let's talk about why we wound up here. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts this is Everyday Driver. The Cayenne we had before was a 2010 base model. Now, 2010 was the last year of the first generation of the Cayenne, so it is the dot two, if you want to think of it in Porsche speak. So it's the second half of the lifespan of that generation. This is a 2017 Porsche Cayenne SE Hybrid Platinum Edition. That's all the words. Those are all of the words that apply to this car. That means this is also the second half of the generation. This is the second half of the second gen Cayenne, so it's also a dot two. Now, the second half of the second generation started in 2015. This is a couple years later when they added Apple CarPlay, so that checked a box as well. She wanted more power. Well, the e-hybrid does happen to have 416 horsepower, 435 pound-feet of torque, which is, well, significantly more than we had before. The e-hybrid is supposed to improve the gas mileage. We will see what it does, but I will say this. It's supposed to get about 14 miles on all electric, because of course these are plug-in hybrids after 2015. Because it's the middle of the winter in Park City, we haven't seen more than 12 miles of all electric. The original MSRP of our original older Cayenne was about 70,000. We got that one for 27 grand. This one was original MSRP of 90. We got it for 37 grand. Not even eight months earlier, we had looked and Cayennes exactly like this one were running for 52 to 55,000. So the fact that I got it for 37 feels halfway okay. The first gen Cayenne was very much like the first gen Panamera in that it drove much better than it looked. I never really liked the look of the first gen Cayenne and frankly, I hated the look of the interior. It was comfortable enough, it served us really well, but the steering wheel in our prior gen Cayenne is legitimately the ugliest steering wheel Porsche's ever done. The interior of the prior version was a two-tone brown, almost orange, that took a little bit of getting used to. We knocked it down some with some black floor mats that helped a lot. This one is the perfect spec. It also, because it's after 2015, got one of my very favorite ever Porsche steering wheels, so I'm thrilled. I love the panoramic sunroof. 
These seats are part of the Platinum Edition, which is about a $3,000 box tick and is frankly well chosen. With the Platinum Edition on the Cayenne, you got the wheel arch extensions, which makes it look more like the turbo. This has got quad pipes out back, which is ridiculous because it's the hybrid, but it looks cool because it looks like the turbo. This has the bi xenon headlights, which I just love the look of those. The really nice Bose upgraded stereo and these fantastic sports seats. They are so much better than the seats in the prior Cayenne. This is my favorite generation of Porsche interior. I think after this, they only got worse because they got more screen reliant. Some people hate this because of the buttons. I actually don't mind buttons because they work the same way every time when I reach for them. Screens are great. They do a lot. This has Apple CarPlay and I'm very thankful for it. I just like having tactile buttons I can hit. This has a lot of them and they're excellent. But it's not all good in this interior because one of the difficulties with this car is storage pockets. This has some of the worst storage options I've encountered. The glove box isn't very big. This center console is, well, it's kind of tiny. These cup holders are okay, but there's no other pockets anywhere outside the doors. Now the door pockets are pretty big. There's nowhere to set your phone while it's plugged in. And my wife keeps things in the tiny little center console here, and so that's not going to happen, and it's barely big enough for a phone anyway. Now, it's also on a different chassis than our prior Cayenne, so it is bigger. In fact, it has significantly more rear seat room. This has a two-inch longer wheelbase, but I feel like even more than that's been found for the back seats. My son actually has decent knee room no matter where we sit, and that was becoming a bit of an issue in our prior Cayenne. This has that power you just don't think about. You put your foot on it and you got to kind of go, wow, wow okay, well, we're doing something now. Zero to 60 has dropped here to about five seconds, which is more than two seconds faster than we had in our prior Cayenne. Now that e-hybrid, plug-in hybrid system does make a big difference in those power numbers. Once the battery's completely depleted, the zero to 60 is only fractionally better than the car we had prior. But most of the time, you're not at that place and this just feels powerful. Our prior Cayenne just had a sport button and that was it. That was just essentially throttle response and that was all it did. This has multiple settings for suspension and for power. And you can go to Comfort, Sport, or Sport Plus. And that has a significant change, even in the standard ride height. Because this is the hybrid, it has other button selections down here. Besides the Sport, I have E-Power and E-Charge. E-Power is, I would like to run on electric only, please. E-Charge is, well, turn on the gasoline motor and please charge the battery while we're driving. It has all of that neon green around all of the logos and there on the calipers just to show you, by the way, I brought the hybrid, which I don't, I don't really need that, but it is the way you can tell. This does have regen braking. It does everything it can to charge the battery. In fact, right now I'm going slightly down a hill and the engine's just off. This is not groundbreaking technology. I'm not saying Porsche is some pioneer here, but they have done it very well. One of the things I think is interesting is this does not have the auto stop start feature that are on most cars now because the engine is constantly turning on and shutting off. And once the engine warms up, it's surprisingly smooth in its handoff. What I've noticed is on a really cold morning here all winter, when the engine hasn't warmed up yet, that handoff is gruff. It's aggressive. It's, it, the engine hasn't had its coffee yet. It's like, wait, what are, what are we doing? Hang on, I need a minute. It isn't quite ready until it gets up to operating temperature. But once it does, then the handoff is one of the best I've ever felt. It's constantly doing a rotation of where the power comes from or where it's getting pushed to. And nine times out of 10, unless you look at the gauge for it, you have no idea what's happening. When my wife first drove this, she thought, man, this feels heavier. And she's not wrong. It's 400 pounds heavier. This monster with everything going on here is 5,400 pounds. Our prior one was about 4950s. Also, this has the hybrid regen, so it doesn't coast as easily. She notices when she takes her foot off the gas, it doesn't coast. It feels heavier. Well, that's because the brakes are trying to offer some regen all the time. And those tires, as wide as they are, don't really help this feel spry. This has 21s on it, which are frankly too big for a family car, but that's what the Platinum Edition came with. But what I can't believe is how wide these tires are. Now to give you a frame of reference, our prior Cayenne runs 255s. Paul's Cayman sports car is a staggered stance and the rears are only 265. This has 295s on it squared. A 295 on an SUV like this in a 21 results in a ridiculously expensive tire. Ask me how I know. I know because it's wintertime in Park City and the roads have gone, they've gone to hell, frankly.
So I was driving along one night in the center lane of the interstate and hit a pothole that legitimately wasn't there the day before. And this pothole was essentially a trench that your wheel could drop into in the perfect position. And then after your wheel dropped in, it compressed. And like a can opener, it pierced the side of the left front wheel on this truck. And it just, it did something I've never seen done to a tire. It cut a perfect rectangular flap out of the tire and it instantly lost all pressure. It was not a good experience. What was a worse experience was calling up my local trusted mechanic to get a replacement tire to find out that they're 450 bucks for a 295 35 21. Ouch. I can't believe I'm buying tires that massive for this truck. And it also makes me wonder, with some thinner rubber and some lighter wheels, what would the miles per gallon be on this? So I wanted better gas mileage in general, and then the ability to be all electric now and then for errands. So we got all of the above here. I'll admit, when I first drove a few PHEVs, plug-in hybrids, and I just thought, what is this for? Why does this make sense? And over time, as I've driven more, I've started to think about usage. I've started to think about our usage, and I've come to a place where this was the right answer for us. Now, it's not the right answer for everybody. Something this big and this complicated has no business feeling the least bit sporty. And yet, when you get in here, we know it's an improvement over the dynamics of the one we had prior. If I go to sport and I lower it one notch down from normal ride height, this feels, frankly, like a large rear wheel drive biased hatchback. I mean, there's no getting away from the fact that it's heavy. It, it weighs a lot. It has the assist from the electric and the gasoline motor, and all of a sudden, this thing just becomes spry and, and light on its feet. And this has an eight-speed automatic with paddles. The difference between this and the six-speed auto that we had in our prior Cayenne, it's, it's like it's two different companies. It's so much better. This is a fantastic eight-speed automatic gearbox. Now, they don't like the PDK dual clutch for the Cayenne because those don't really like towing. This still has a lot of towing capacity and works like a normal automatic, but better. Frankly, this shouldn't be dynamic. It shouldn't have anything in it that is fun. It is the large family SUV, but because Porsche wants all their stuff to have a certain level of dynamic fun, it has a surprising amount. And I love being able to drop it just, just one notch down to turn it into my extra big family hatchback, and then we actually kind of have some fun. Once you get it out of an SUV ride height, it actually feels kind of like a sedan. It's not quite to Panamera levels, but it starts to feel related to that car, which is, I think, a pretty big compliment. When I put this in full comfort mode and raise the ride height to normal, honestly, it's about as comfortable in here as my Volkswagen Phaeton was. But then I can make it hunker down and have a sporting demeanor that the Phaeton never had. I'm surprised already at the versatility of the ride and feel here. I'm excited, honestly, about the ability to just do a little electric runs back and forth, but yet have full flexibility for how we want to use the car. On this actual review, while I wasn't hooning all the time, but was some, used some electric, used some normally, I've averaged 24 miles to the gallon. And some of that was hunkered down and my foot to the floor. So I think that's decent. Again, our last one got 16. And if you pushed it, 14. The best I ever saw on our old Cayenne was 19 miles of the gallon. This is already averaging 20. I mean, we're not saving anybody here, but we are actually getting significantly better gas mileage than we've had before. I'll take that as a win. One of the things I always knew in the back of my mind about that prior Cayenne is as the base model, there wasn't a lot of crazy tech to go wrong. That's not true here. There, there, there might be issues. Uh, if there are, we'll certainly report them because, of course, we have the normal gasoline motor sourced from Audi. We have the electric system. We have the two playing in concert with each other. But also, this Platinum Edition got the full air suspension. So now I'm having flashbacks to my uh, Phaeton ownership when air suspension goes bad. But we'll see what happens, because what's the long term of that going to be? I don't know. Some of you are rage typing right now that this is the worst idea ever. This thing's going to break down constantly. But everyone said that about our prior Cayenne, too, and it was kind of great. 
Now, of course, we've taken a swing to a, <laughs> a much more complicated, expensive version of the Cayenne this time, so I might regret that. I'll let you know. So far, though, we are just in love with this, and not just because it's our new family car. We're in love with it because, as my wife put it, it is the perfect upgrade in every capacity over the Cayenne she already had. We bought this one with 77,000 miles. We have just over 1,000 miles on it already. I've taken a road trip of more than 500 miles. We have a huge family road trip coming up. My wife has already started just doing errands and commuting in it, and it's been great. What really horrifies me is that currently, I own two of the exact same model car in the exact same color scheme. I have raged against this on our podcast more than once. I have advised people to move on. Please don't do this. Here I am. Here I am because my wife loves these things. We found the nice upgrade for what she wanted. It checked the boxes I was concerned about. We were able to afford it. And now I am a man who owns two black Porsche Cayennes with tan interior. I've actually found myself saying words like, well, I'll take the old Cayenne. Paul is teasing me mercilessly, and you probably will as well. We'll have that older Cayenne for a little bit here because we're coming out of winter and we're gonna, when we have really nasty winter days, we're just keeping it on the winter tires. Also, since everything else in our life is sports cars, there's a discussion about what comes up next winter as an additional winter car than this. We had the GR86 and that helped. Since that's gone now, what do we do this next winter? I'm hoping to have a different winter car, but we may keep the old Cayenne for a winter beater because it's only worth about seven or $8,000. It's got 160,000 miles on it. It runs and we know it's history. It's hard to go buy an $8,000 used car and feel that confident in it. But then I continue to be the guy that owns two black Cayennes, which I really don't want to do. 